this video, you'll learn all about how to protect your shit. Because as a rich doctor, everybody wants to sue your ass and take all your stuff. Welcome to Money Med School, where doctors come to learn about money and how to protect their shit. Today, we're going to be talking about how to protect your shit, because as we all know, as a big, fancy, rich doctor, we're all loaded and just rolling in cash everywhere we go because that's what everyone thinks doctors are doing all day. When we're, you know, not outside uh, parking all our Lamborghinis, we're inside counting our money. So if you want to know how to protect all your money from all those people out there trying to, like, take it away from you, you're in the right place. It's time to see why A. If you're a doctor, you already know what that means, unfortunately. But if you're not a doctor and you're reading this for fun, CYA stands for cover your ass. We usually use it as part of the phrase CYA medicine, as in, oh yeah, I know ordering an EKG, chest x-ray, 200 labs, and a stress test is probably overkill for my 15-year-old skin tag removal pre-op workup, but hey, it's CYA medicine. In today's world, a lot of our decisions are made to protect our ass, so that if, God forbid, anything goes wrong with our plan, we can prove, quote-unquote, to the plaintiff attorney that we did every imaginable thing under the sun to prevent it from happening. CYA medicine is not good for anybody. It's bad for the patient because it subjects them to a lot of extra testing and rigmarole, and the costs that those incur it's bad for the physician because it forces us to make decisions we don't agree with, and it's bad for the healthcare system overall because it's wasteful and drives up costs. But I digress. Today is about how to cover your ass, ETS, i.e. wealth protection. As a doctor, you've got a lot of threats to your wealth, mainly death and taxes, but they also include lawsuits and not just malpractice, disability, and identity theft and fraud. Death, as in inheritance tax and probate, or loss of your income due to you being, you know, dead and unable to work. Although many hospital corporations wouldn't consider being dead a reason not to show up for work, am I right? Just get a couple of your friends to prop you up on rounds and off you go. Taxes, your biggest expense, but it doesn't have to be lawsuits. When I say lawsuit, I don't mean a malpractice suit. Those rarely go after your personal assets. Disability, if you get hurt or sick and can't work, what happens to your income? And identity theft and fraud. These things can happen to anyone, but doctors are particularly vulnerable because we are perceived by the general public to be rich. And we're too busy practicing medicine to be protecting our stuff from folks who want to take it. Plus, we are high earners, so we get taxed at high rates. Note, being a high earner does not mean being rich, hence money medical school. Okay, let's do it. Are you ready for this? Death. Death causes two problems. One, you can't work anymore because you're dead. Two, your assets will go into probate unless they are protected. What all this adds up to is that your family, who depended on you, now has no income and also can't get their inheritance until the state you live in processes it through their ultra-efficient government bureaucratic process for two years and makes sure the taxes are taken out. That process is called probate. So what do you do about these two problems? First off, avoid dying. But if that can't be avoided, and I understand that for the majority of us it can't, then you need to have term life insurance that will replace your income for your dependents, and you need to set up a trust to, build your, uh, to prevent your assets from going into probate. You may be thinking, but I have a will, why do I need a trust? And also, I'm not a billionaire, so again, why do I need a trust? Well, a will is just a document that says what stuff goes to which people. It doesn't say how or when. That's where the trust comes in. A trust will specifically outline how the stuff gets to the people so that the state doesn't do it instead. Trusts are not just for billionaires. 
they're not just for millionaires. They're for everyone who has assets that they are passing on to heirs when they die. Trusts also protect your estate from excess taxation, and most importantly, trusts prevent your assets from becoming public knowledge. That's right. When your estate goes through probate, every asset you own becomes public information. You don't want your asset info to be public. To set up legal protective entities and trusts, you'll need to hire an attorney. For life insurance, that's term life insurance, not whole or universal, you'll need to purchase it through an independent insurance agent. Now on to taxes. Boy, this is a light one, isn't it? When you're first starting out, you'll probably be a W-2 employee with taxable income and not much in the way of assets. At that stage, it's fine to just throw your numbers, numbers into TurboTax and be done with it. But as you increase your wealth, your assets grow. You obtain investment properties, you have multiple income streams, and or a business of your own, an LLC, or your taxes will become, all, your taxes are going to become more complex as you go from being a new attending to a quote unquote seasoned attending. Owning a business and owning real estate both provide you with excellent tax benefits because the government wants people to own businesses and buy real estate. Well, you may be thinking, if I have my CPA, uh, what else is there? There, isn't this obvious? Well, no, because the CPA's job is to keep you in compliance with the IRS rules. They are not there to save you money or to give you financial advice. They are there to make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. What you need is a tax strategist. Typically, this is an attorney who specializes in tax law, also called the tax code. They can look at your situation and say, hmm, well, you have this business here that gets you these deductions, according to this law, and then over here you have your rental property and that gets you this advantage. So blah, 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 they apply a strategy based on the tax law to reduce your tax burden as low as possible. This is legal. It has a name, tax avoidance. What a terrible name. So many negative associations, like, you know, with the person who was recently evicted from the White House. Lots of huge companies apply these laws and end up paying less tax than you do because it's their workers' incomes that are taxed instead. The general public looks unfavorably on all this, but it's the law and it can benefit you, so you might as well use it. Next, we have lawsuits. When it comes to lawsuits, you have to be able to make your assets invisible to the world, i.e. plaintiff attorneys, so that you won't lose them in a lawsuit. When I say lawsuit, I don't mean a malpractice suit. Those rarely go after your personal assets. I mean, Joe Schmo slipped and fell on your property and finds out you're a rich doctor, so they sue you. Or your teenager, oopsies, borrowed your car. Ooh, I'm cringing just thinking about it. Borrowed your car and caused an accident that injured someone. Legally, you are responsible for this because it's your car. And again, once they find out you're a rich doctor, they're gonna sue the shit out of you. That is, unless you're not really a rich doctor. But Wagner, isn't the entire purpose of all of this to make us wealthy? Yes, Padawan, it is. But I'm not saying you don't have wealth. I'm saying you have to hide your wealth from people who want to take it. The first thing that happens when someone decides to sue you is that the plaintiff attorney runs an asset search. This pulls up any property, bank accounts, and other large value assets that you own in your name. If they see you've got some shit to come after, then they're gonna come after it. This includes insurance. If you have an umbrella policy or a huge auto policy or both, in other words, if you are over-insured, they're looking at a gold mine. It's even easier to sue the big ass policy than to get your stuff. The plaintiff attorney has to front the cost of the lawsuit until they get a judgment in their favor. That means they're on the hook for about two years of expenses while the case is processing. They don't get paid by the plaintiff. If they did, there'd be a lot less lawsuits, that's for sure. They get paid by taking a large percentage of the settlement. 
So the plaintiff attorney wants to see that you've got assets in the bank and fat, P-H-A-T, insurance to take. They don't work for free. The solution to this problem is to hide your assets. And you do this by taking them out of your name and putting them into a legal protective entity like an LLC or a trust. So that when the asset search is done in your name, it shows Jack Squat. Your 401k and IRA retirement accounts are also off limits, so yet another reason to max those out. So again, don't be overinsured. Too big of a policy makes you a target. You may think you're buying yourself extra protection, but you're really buying a target for your back, plus wasting money to do so. Disability. So we covered this in another video, and I've listed the link below in the caption notes. Uh, but basically, if you get sick or you get hurt and you can't work, then this insurance will cover part of your lost income. It's insurance for your income if you are no longer able to work. For this, you'll need to purchase through an independent insurance agent. For the love of God, not through a financial advisor. Thank you. Finally, identity theft. Jeez, look at this guy. Jesus, I'm creeped out just looking at this. Where do I find these images? My God. Can you imagine when they were shooting the uh, stock photo images for this? <laughs> yeah, just uh, just put this black like abyss over your face, and we're going to shoot a picture of you at the, uh, the computer. Anyway, I digress. Okay, what the heck is this? You hear about it all the time. It's when a criminal steals your personal information like your social security number and uses it to commit fraud like opening fake bank accounts or credit cards which are then used to make fraudulent purchases. This can damage your credit history and it costs you a lot of time and money to fix your credit history and get off the hook for the money that the thieves stole in your name. Identity theft includes a theft of any of your personal information name, address, birth date, phone number, email address, social security number, medical ID number, which is your account number for your health insurance, driver's license number, bank account numbers, other account numbers, license plate number, employee ID number, etc. Here are some examples of identity theft. Other, in other words, how this shit can hit the fan. Uh, one way, they take out fake credit cards in your name and charge up a bunch of shit. Uh, two, they might get fake bank accounts in your name. They may steal your health insurance ID number and make false health insurance claims and take the money. They could file your tax return in your name and steal your tax refund. And cyber fraud. It's the old dark web. I don't know what happens there, but it's bad. Like, for sure. Federal law limits your liability in some aspects, but not entirely. And if thieves get a hold of your cash or your crypto, it eh, is gone. All right, now there are two types of monitoring for identity theft, credit monitoring and identity monitoring. Credit monitoring alerts you to an account being opened in your name with your social security number. And identity monitoring scans for any abnormal use of your personal information that I previously talked about. It also alerts you if your information was sold on the dark web. Monitoring does not protect you from fraud. It only helps you detect it early after it's happened, but it helps you detect it early in order to limit the damage. That's why speed is of the essence. The faster you are alerted to fraud, the faster you can shut it down and limit the damage done. There's only one way to truly protect your credit from fraud and that is to place a credit freeze. No one can open an account in your name with your social security number if a credit freeze is in place. You'll have to unfreeze this if you want to open a credit card or get a loan. The links are all in the video caption below as to how to do a credit freeze. You also want to make sure to freeze your kid's credit too, if you have kids. <laughs> first criteria. Um, that's because thieves know that kids don't use their credit, so if it was stolen, no one would know about it for years until the poor kid decides to get their first credit card and discovers they have a FICO of negative 200 due to years of fraud in their name. Devastating. 
there's a link on how to do a credit freeze for your child in the show notes below. Okay, so you can monitor your identity and your credit by signing up for an identity and credit protection service. They are called protection services, but again, they cannot protect your information from theft. They can only alert you to it as soon as possible to help limit the damage done by thieves. Many services also offer quote unquote insurance as well, but that's mainly a marketing tool and it's a misnomer. The insurance does not reimburse anyone for theft in your name. It just helps you with the credit repair process. So it's easy to misinterpret that. And that's fine, you know, you should, have, you should get one that does offer insurance, but don't let that make or break the selection of the product. Some say the threat of identity theft is exaggerated, but if it happens to you, it's a huge loss of time, peace of mind, energy, and, you know, in addition to any money that you may lose. And it takes ages to sort out damage to your credit history and get yourself all sorted back out. So here's a quick way to begin protecting your ass, ets. Take three minutes to go ahead and sign up for an identity monitoring service. There are links in the captions below. In the meantime, here are three other things you can do to protect your identity and access to your accounts and your personal information. Uh, one, or in this case, three. <laughs> Always check your credit reports at least once a year. Uh, you can get an annual, uh, free annual credit report from each of the three credit report bureaus at annualcreditreport.com. I'll put the link below. And right now, due to the pandemic, all three credit reporting bureaus are currently offering free weekly credit reports as well. Next, you can sign up for the junk mail opt-out. The fewer, the, the fewer blank credit card applications with your name and address floating around in the ether, the better. Uh, you know, because thieves could just steal those right out of your mailbox and go fill out the applications. Um, also, it really cuts down on waste and some of these identity and credit monitoring services will offer that. Um, so have a look at that. And next, be careful with your social media, okay? Don't share your home address, phone number, email address, workplace information, or any other personal information on social media. Um, and you may be thinking, duh, I would never put my home address on my Facebook. Well, yeah, your phone number is in there and your email address is in there, and you might have put where you worked last or where you work now, and you have to give Facebook your email address, um, and sometimes they want your phone number, especially if you have two-factor authentication on your account. And if you haven't checked your privacy settings, those things might be publicly visible. So what you gotta do is you gotta go into your Facebook privacy settings or your Instagram or whatever social media you're on, go in your privacy settings to make sure none of your personal information is publicly viewable. In general, you really wanna be selective in what you share on social media because thieves can piece together all sorts of your life to steal your identity with the help of your own Facebook page or social media account. For example, you know those extra security questions that you fill in to protect your accounts? Well, how easy is it for, your, um, for a thief to go on your social media account and find your best friend's name, your dog's name, or your hometown? Hmm? And those are those security question answers. That's how they get you. All right, and if it's too late and you've been hacked, first thing you wanna do is report it to identitytheft.gov. That's a great website. It will help you to recover your identity and fix things. Um, also, I have included some links to other resources below to help you with post-hack situations. All right, thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please smash the like button below. And how why not subscribe to the Money Med School channel while you're at it? Now go out there and cover your ass. Ets.